Welcome to this video on setting up your domiciliary care company, running a high standard quality company and passing your CQC interview. This video is about the 13 CQC fundamental standards. So we're going to go through them one by one. The CQC fundamental standards, of which there are 13, include person-centred care, dignity and respect, consent, safety, safeguarding from abuse, food and drink, premises and equipment, complaints, good governance, staffing, fit and proper staff, duty of candor, and the displaying of your rating and your assessment. To help you understand each of the standards, I'm going to go through and list the legislation which is appropriate for each standard and also give you some examples and ideas of what the standards relate to and how you can ensure quality standards within your service and for supporting your workers to ensure they are aware of what they need to do and how they need to operate. Person-centred care. Personali Personalised care as per the Care Act 2014. Carers might create and regularly update personalised care plans for each service user, taking into account their preferences, history and needs. Management could provide training on person-centred care and monitor care plans to ensure they are consistently applied. The involvement in decision making as part of Care Act 2014 shows us that carers should involve service users in decisions about their care and their support. Management can establish policies to ensure service users are involvement and check that the policies are being followed. Dignity and respect. Ensuring dignity and respect. Carers should always treat service users with dignity and respect, for example, by ensuring they have privacy when they need it and addressing them in their preferred manner. Managers can implement and enforce policies that uphold dignity and respect. Consent. Consent to care and treatment. Before providing any care or treatment, carers need to obtain informed consent from the service user or their legal representative or their family. Management should provide training on obtaining consent and monitor that carers are following the correct procedures. Safety. Safe management of medications is an example. Carers should follow strict procedures for managing medication, including proper storage and accurate record keeping. Management needs to audit medication and have management practices reviewed regularly. Avoiding unnecessarily unnecessary risks. Carers should perform risk assessments for all aspects of care and service users' living conditions. Management should ensure that risk assessments are up to date and that any, unidentif any identified risks are addressed. Protection from infection and infectious diseases. Carers should follow infection control procedures including proper hand hygiene. Management should provide the necessary equipment and training to prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Proper use of restraint. If restraint is necessary, carers should be trained and must ensure that it is used appropriately and safely. Management should monitor the use of restraint and provide training to ensure it's used only as a last resort and the best interests of the service user. Safeguarding from abuse. Carers should be vigilant for signs of abuse and report any concerns immediately. Management should ensure there is clear and easy to use reporting systems in place and provide training on safeguarding. Food and drink nutrition. 
meeting the nutritional and hydrational needs of service users. Carers should ensure service users have access to and are encouraged to consume adequate food and drink. Management should monitor nutritional and hydration needs and provide training and resources to meet these needs. Premises and equipment. Safe environment and equipment is necessary and carers should ensure that the service user's living environment is safe and that any equipment is used correctly. Management is responsible for maintaining their own premises and their equipment, ensuring they meet safety standards. Management should conduct regular checks and maintenance of their own premises and equipment to ensure they meet the required standards. Complaints. Receiving and acting on complaints. Carers should be trained to handle complaints professionally and es escalate them to management where necessary. Management should ensure there is an effective complaint handling process in place. The effective handling of complaints by management should be that which uses feedback and complaints as an opportunity to improve services. Implementing change where necessary and communica communicating these back to service users and their family. Good governance. Good governance. Management should establish and maintain effective good governance and quality insurance systems to monitor and improve the quality of care, ensuring policies are in place and that they are followed. Staffing. Ensuring staff competency. Management should ensure all staff are adequately trained and competent to in perform their roles, providing ongoing training and development opportunities. Staffing levels. Management should ensure there are enough staff to meet the needs of all service users. Supporting training and professional development. Management should invest in the training and professional development of staff to ensure high quality care. Fit and proper staff. Safe recruitment. Management should follow safe recruitment practices, conducting thorough background checks to ensure all staff are fit and proper persons to deliver care. Duty of candor. Ensuring transparency. If something goes wrong, management should ensure that the service user and their family are informed as well as CQC if it's appropriate to do so, and apologies issued and support is provided. They should also ensure lessons are learned to prevent future occurrences. CQC ranking display. display displaying your ratings. Management should ensure that the services are, that have CQC rating is displayed prominently on your premises and on the services website, ensuring it is accessible to service users and for their families. So by following these guidelines, domiciliary care providers can ensure they meet the CQC's fundamental standards, providing high quality, safe and person-centered care to all service users. Remember to look at your statement of purpose it should reflect your aims and your aim is to ensure you incorporate in your day-to-day -day practice provision and leadership all 13 fundamental standards set out by the CQC, integrating them into a comprehensive and inspiring delivery to service users that reflects the values and commitments of an outstanding domiciliary care provider.